All right, and welcome to the Milo Beasley Show. Do 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 do. Episode number one hundred. Oh, I was helping. You're helping. One hundred and twenty-four. Episode one hundred and twenty-four. We're here with Ty Templeton. I am happy to be a hundred more than a case of beer. It's very <laughs> exciting to me. Uh, and we're here at MegaCon Tampa Bay, uh, the the first MegaCon in Tampa. Ty, uh, you're. Thank you for taking a, a couple minutes to talk to me. You're obviously uh, uh, busy here uh, yeah. doing some pretty cool commissions. They make me draw pictures when they pay for my plane. <laughs> I wish they. I, I I can't draw. How long have you um, been drawing professionally? Oh uh, God. Uh, comics or in general? Uh, comics about 33 years, something like that. Uh, professionally, probably about 35, because I was doing uh, things as a young man that were in comics but illustrations. As I just mentioned, my first ever paid gig, I drew pornographic Christmas cards. Not comics. A lot of jokes about people coming down chimneys, mostly. Is that what they do in Canada? No, they do that everywhere. Right? Okay, because you're you're from the Canada, right? I am from both of the Canadas. Both? Wait, there's two Canadas? Upper and Lower Canada. Oh, I I haven't been to either. Oh, okay. They're, very, they're both very nice. In Lower Canada, they I'm sorry, in Upper Canada, they speak French. They speak French? Yes. Uh, so do you do you speak French, then? Uh, je parle I have no clue what that means. I I've been I speak a little. I've I've been to I've been to France and all I know is sorty. That, that means, means exit. Go away. That means exit. <laughs> sorty. Like over there, sorty. Actually go. it was quite funny. I was in France a couple of years ago with a whole bunch of Batman artists. We were on a tour through Europe. And we were in uh, we were in one of the, the subways in Paris. And it didn't occur to me that they couldn't read French, because I'm from Canada, we can all read French. <laughs> and so I got out of the subway and I left, like you do. And I, I, I'm up on the up, up on the street up top and I'm looking around going where the hell's Neil Adams? Where's Bernie Wrightson? Where the hell are they? And so I went back into the subway, and they're all just staring around, trying to figure out how to get out. And I go, there's an exit right there. And they go, it doesn't say exit, it says sortie. How the hell am I supposed to figure out what that means? It just never occurred to me that people don't know what sortie means. I, I, I figured it out pretty easy. It means exit. It means uh, go this way if you want to if you get out. Uh, we have to learn French in Canada. It's part of our school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it? So so then does that mean? Like, I assume people in, I assume people in Florida can speak some Spanish, right? Uh, they they teach it to you in school, but that doesn't mean you learn it. Right, but it's the same thing. At, at a certain point, you, not every Canadian learns it, but we have to. We have to, we have to take classes. You have to speak French. enough to be able to pass your classes. Yes, and my wife's family's all French, so I have no choice. Oh, oh, that's, that's uh, interesting. Christmas time. No, it's okay. I can, I understand French. It's not a problem. <laughs> so, uh, so do you do you live here in the states now, or do no, you? No, no, I live in Toronto. Oh, you live in Toronto. Yeah, I like snow. That's, that's almost America. America, right? Uh, we, we, we jut down into America. We're the part of Canada that right. feels very nervous about being north, so we come way down. Right, yeah. In fact, Toronto, if you take uh, the parallels and you go across, there are parts of California north of us. Oh. It's a part of Canada that you learn something down. every day. Yeah, oh, yeah no, we're, we're very proud of the fact that we're not that northern in Canada. Right, in so, Toronto. I mean, you got a baseball team. You're pretty much America. We at this just point. lost, though. Well, I mean. The just, Indians just took us four games out of five. Listen, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a raised fan, so born and raised in Tampa, so I can't. You made it further than, than my raise. Yeah, okay. But we've actually, I mean, have you guys taken the, uh, the, uh, the pennant? Or, sorry, not the pennant. Have you taken the series a couple of times? Uh, we have two and a half series. Yeah, we we went to a World Series once, like went like visited one. You know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Blue Jays got back to back World Series in '92 and '93. I remember. And then when the strike came, we were in first place, so we would have won that one too. So uh, I always say we have two and a half. Strike season, Cardinals were pretty unbeatable. Yeah, I know, but we were in, we were in first place in our division <laughs> when the strike happened, and we were defending a World Series. So I believe we would. So won. you're so you're a big baseball fan then? I take I it. Was, I was was. I was until '94, until the strike. Oh, goodness, the strike pissed me off. I used to have season tickets. I used to go see the Jays 20 times a year, and uh, uh, the family had season tickets. And uh, the strike pissed me off. It really did. And I maybe have only gone to 20 games since the strike. Interesting. Uh, what do you think about uh, Montreal possibly getting an expansion team again? Uh, again, I know. Okay. Well, Montreal is a hockey town. They kind of don't care about baseball in Montreal. When the Expos were playing, I saw a documentary that might say otherwise. Yeah. But then again, like, it, you know, a lot of people are spirited, you know, one time every 10 years, but that doesn't mean they're going to go to every game, right? No, but the thing is, Montreal is devoted to hockey. All, like, hockey means life to them. It's the blood of Montreal. And uh, they had a, they have a 
football team that they don't really care about called the Alouettes. They don't really care about them. And uh, the Expos never really have sold out stadiums. Like, you can't get into a Jays game. All 56,000 seats are sold every single game. But uh, the Expo Stadium, you know, it was kind of cracking and there was cement falling. <laughs> no, before the Expos disappeared, their stadium was falling apart literally. That's a lot of this. Have you been, have you been to have you been to the Ray Stadium? I don't know if it gets gets much worse than that. No. Well, I, uh, what was the stadium that actually fell apart in an earthquake? That was uh, 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 that must have been uh, obviously Oakland, right? I think it was Oakland. Yeah. Oakland or San Fran. Same thing. I don't know. It's it's those the those stadiums way over came there. apart during the earthquake and they couldn't sit in the bleachers for a couple of games afterwards. <laughs> That's a lost lawsuits waiting to happen. But who's going to Oakland games? <laughs> so uh, so uh, you've uh, uh, back to comics right. and while we're here, uh, you've actually worked on like many many like big name comics obviously pretty Batman well, pretty well all of them at some point yeah uh, years I've been doing this yeah so uh, I mean how does one get their foot in the door like what oh. do, you, do you just uh, take your stuff and ship it off to uh, publishers well uh, I got into the business sufficiently long ago that I'm not sure my route would work for anybody what I did was uh, I was working at a small little publisher in Toronto uh, called Vortex Comics and we we weren't anybody but uh, suddenly in the space of about a year and a half all the people working for our, our little tiny publisher we all suddenly did really well one of uh, one of our, our artists was a guy named Chester Brown okay. who went on to create Yummy Fur and it took off like a rocket we had a character called Mr. X that was being done by Jaime Hernandez that took okay. off like a rocket my little project took off did very well for itself and and suddenly our little tiny company that was nobody boom everybody was paying attention to us and I got I got job offers after I got nominated for uh, uh, what was called a Kirby Award back then I think they're now called the Harveys but I got nominated for a Kirby Award and then suddenly the phone's ringing and it's like would you like to do Superman okay yeah I don't think uh, that's, I don't that's think, a good phone call to receive yeah, I don't think that system is really available anymore because you don't see little publishers around the country just suddenly popping like this because it's really hard to get pub get going in, in print publishing now nowadays most of the people who get noticed get noticed on the internet right oh yeah that's uh and, and I guess places like this yeah uh, and, and there's I've seen a lot of like uh you walk down an artist alley and uh, you may see guys who have done um, like a variant for for big name uh, yeah. public, you know so uh, you know variance it's, it's good nice, to see variance is a nice way to sort of break in nowadays but the reality is Marvel and DC don't really break artists anymore they they wait until an artist starts somewhere else gets a little attention because I always like to say and I'm gonna go back to baseball for a minute that Marvel is like playing for the Yankees and you don't get to play for the Yankees straight out of, out of high school you got to play for triple-a and double-a and then if it's the Yankees you have to play for a couple other teams <laughs> and then they steal you but uh, Marvel is you know that's the pinnacle that's what you're trying to work for so it's very rare that Marvel looks at somebody that's never been published it's pretty rare they used to do that back in the 80s and 90s they could find people at conventions and go oh my god you're good that's but nowadays it tends to be oh my god you're good what have you done uh, uh, speaking of something that you've done uh, I want to touch on real quick before we wrap up the uh, the boot camp that you have yeah yeah let's talk about that like uh, I, I was reading a bit uh, a, a little bit on it but I really wanted to talk about this boot camp because I haven't really heard of anything like that. Okay. Well, uh, what it is is uh, I have a little one-room schoolhouse in downtown Toronto, and I teach uh, these really intensive information dump courses that in 21 hours over seven weeks, I, I teach various skills, but the reason I call it a boot camp is because it's not like today we're going to learn how to hold a pencil, tomorrow we're going to learn how to make a circle. It's like, no, day one you're going to learn the proportions of the human body and how to hinge all the all the muscles and uh, legs. Week two, we're going to teach you. <laughs> Week two, we're going to teach you how to uh, cast shadows on things. Week three, we're going to start talking about how weight transfers itself. And and uh, I've had a couple of people who come out of these classes go, I forgot half of it already, but that's twice as much as I expected to learn anyway. And so, I, 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 I because when I went to art school, I quit because I did not think they were teaching me enough. I thought what they were giving me was too spoon feedy and too too slow. So I thought I'm going to teach courses that make you sweat and and make you work out. So that um, one of the things we do in my writing class at the end of the second writing class you have to pitch and write a pilot episode for a television series and you don't get to you don't get to like say no you get two weeks to do it and uh, I make you do it one of the things we do in the writing class is you have to plot a full 22 page comic story in 45 minutes uh, and usually in partnership with somebody else and no one ever fails everybody gets all 22 pages plotted and done because I teach techniques to, to quickly get things done 
the reality of our business is they don't really, they want it good, but they really want it Friday. And, and, so, and so what I'm teaching is this idea that you can't afford to wait for inspiration. You right. can't afford to be delicate about it and say, oh, you know, I can't write until the sun is facing west and I have, you know, my yogurt for the morning. I, 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 I more or less teach the idea that we are a kind of artistic assembly line and we have to put out work at a regular basis quite a rapid speed so that's the sort of techniques I teach there's, that's, there's none of this learning it slowly at my school that sounds really cool if I had any artistic ability I would no, that doesn't matter <laughs> artistic ability is nonsense it's uh, it's a skill not a talent so it can be taught hmm. and if you can write your name legibly that I can read what you wrote down that's a form of drawing and if you can make the letters look like the letters I expect them to do then I can tr teach you how to draw an elbow and uh, we've already graduated a number of students who are working at Marvel in DC. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, uh, That's really cool. Uh, Marcio Takara is one of my ex students. He did Iron Man for a while at Marvel. Wow. Uh, I can't, we, I had another student named Adam Gorham who just got a great Marvel gig and I can't tell you, can't you what talk it about is. It yet. <laughs> it's a huge character and he's really thrilled to be working on it. Uh, we've graduated a couple of writers who go, went on to write for TV and stuff. Uh, we're a very intensive course that I expect my students to want to do it professionally. Cool. Uh, one thing that we like to do on the, on the Milo Beasley show is called the top five. Okay. Pick a random question. Uh, I get to pick the question? Well, I usually What are your five favorite cheeses? There, go. <laughs> so I want to bring this back around to baseball and the Blue Jays. Oh, baseball. Top five favorite Blue Jays of all time. No, because I'll just pick five guys from the 92 roster. That's not, it's just too easy. I'll just go I mean, John Allroot, Dave Steve. I'll just pick the 92 roster. <laughs> so that's dumb. No, we won't. Okay, okay. Don't all right, me. all right. So five favorites. Your five favorites television or movie Batmans in order. Oh, uh, the uh, in order my favorite. In one? order, your your actors, your five favorite actors. Oh, the actors. Yes, the actors. Oh, the actors. Okay. Uh, favorite Batman actor, Adam West. Not even close. Uh, second, be Kevin Conroy. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, third would probably be uh, Christian Bale. Uh, I don't know that anyone else has ever played Batman. <laughs> well, there might be a, a few here and That's it here and there. That's it. We're done. Now, what about uh, Will Forte from the uh, oh, you're Lego, right, you're right. Will the Lego, Forte. The Lego movie? Oh, no. Will Forte. You're absolutely right. I should give it to Will Forte. <laughs> and if we're going to do that, I'll give it to Jason Sudeikis from movie 43. Okay. There's a, oh, yes. There's a <laughs> sketch with Batman in that. So, okay. So, Will Forte and Jason Sudeikis. We'll throw a couple of Saturday Night Live cast members in there. Why You'll not? notice I am not mentioning the other ones. Right. Although I do, in fact, own uh, a part of Michael Keaton's costume. I have one of the uh, ha uh, the headpieces from one of Michael Keaton's costumes. It's uh, it, You learn really quickly. He has a small head. I was, I was surprised at that. Because whenever people come over to my house, they try to put it on, and then it's hellish to get off. Because it's rubber, and it's really tight. And then people put it on slides down really nicely but pulling it off and then they can get lumps of hair come on <laughs> i learned real quick i only wore it once and i didn't put it on again because michael keaton had a small head <laughs> and he's well, not on my top five you'll notice where can folks find you on the social medias and uh, on the tightumbling.com it'll take you straight to my uh my little page where i do uh cartoons about bunnies wait a minute we'll hold that up for the area a little bunny little Wee! cartoons about bunnies it's 3d now yeah. <laughs> we're gonna get some glasses uh, for the fans it's a it's a series of autobiographical stories where I'm a six foot rabbit. Other than that, they're completely true. Um, and uh, they're in the sense that nobody in the stories ever goes, holy crap, you're a six foot rabbit because I wasn't in the original version of the story. Oh. But it's uh, it's things that, oh, I gotta go. I have a person here who needs a signature, so I have to sign it while I'm being interviewed. All right. So I think we're going to wrap up. Don't forget you can find me on all the socials at The Wrestling Bomb and don't forget to like us on Facebook at The Milo Beasley Show. I thank you very much for taking a few moments thank to talk you. to me. Like Boom. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Yay, I'm entertaining.